I'm Dr. Rich Stone. I'm the Director of Laparoscopy and Robotic Surgery at the Smith Institute for Urology, which is located at the North Shore and Long Island Jewish University Health System, uh, affiliated with Hofstra University School of Medicine. You've been working closely with colleagues on the use of MRI in the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. What are the key things you've learned over the past couple of years? How do you talk to patients about this? As you're aware, prostate cancer uh, is a very challenging illness for a number of reasons, and we have a lot of dilemmas, both in the diagnosis of prostate cancer and how we treat patients with prostate cancer. We have a lot of major questions and dilemmas. And for over two decades, MRI has been used to try to help us with these dilemmas. Things like, how do we avoid false negative biopsies? So you have a patient who has an elevated PSA, biopsy is negative. Does that patient really have cancer or not? Just because the biopsy is negative, is it, is it accurate? Once prostate cancer is diagnosed, is this a prostate cancer that is a low risk or a high risk cancer? Does this patient really need treatment? And sometimes the clinical variables, the PSA, the examination, or the biopsy findings are not really accurate enough. So there are those situations and other situations. How do, who, who gets surgery? Who should get radiotherapy? Once you choose a treatment, you know, how can we tailor that treatment best for an individual patient? So MRI has been looked at for over 20 years, but there's some exciting new MRI approaches that are helping us answer some of those questions, I think, to the benefit of our patients. Could you be a little more specific about the particulars? Do you recommend that every patient get an MRI before treatment to make sure you're making the correct decisions? So if you look at the use of MRI over the last 20 years, several developments have occurred. First of all, we've gotten better MRI scanners. We used to use, scanners are thought about uh, in terms of their magnetic source, so the magnet that's used to, to perform the MRI, and we look at how many Tesla, or that's the strength of the magnet. So traditionally a 1.5 Tesla scanner was used, and we now have three Tesla scanners. So that improves our imaging quality, and I'll speak to that. And we also can use endorectal coils. So actually a probe is placed in the rectum and it improves the resolution and the quality of the images. Um, the other major advancement with MRI is some advanced MRI techniques. Uh, the most standard MRI technique is called T2 weighted imaging. It's just a simple way of getting an MRI picture, a simple type of imaging. And there have been some advanced and newer methods that are improving the accuracy of MRI. Things like spectroscopy, diffusion weighted imaging, uh, and dynamic contrast enhanced MRI. And these are some exciting new MRI techniques. And what we're able to do is put them all together. It's like uh, taking a photograph with a Polaroid, a little digital camera, and then maybe a digital SLR with a telephoto lens. And then taking all of those images, putting them together, and you really start to see what you're looking at. Um, and it may compensate for the shortcomings of an individual camera. If you just took black and white or just took color, you might not see the whole picture. So what we're able to do is now use these multiple MRI modalities, um, sometimes even obviate the need for the probe, the endorectal probe at all, which makes the exam more comfortable for patients. And that's something that we're studying and figuring out, you know, what are the ideal components of this study? I don't think that this type of imaging study or an MRI is necessary for every single patient either with an elevated PSA or, a prost or prostate cancer, but there are specific situations where it has value. Can you give us an example of a situation where this has helped you? One of the most exciting um, opportunities for a multi-parametric MRI, or the type of MRI that involves these multiple types of MRI imaging combined into one, is in patients who have an elevated PSA, or even worse, a rising PSA, a concerning trend in their PSA, but their biopsies have been negative in the past, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe even three times. But their PSA is concerning. Um, and there's an unanswered question there. Are we just missing it because of the sampling error? Because biopsies, after all, are not perfect, and they're not typically targeted. It's a random sampling. So in such patients with a rising PSA and multiple negative biopsies, that's a great opportunity to employ this kind of MRI. And in fact, studies have shown that this type of MRI can increase our detection of prostate cancer, perhaps twofold. So double the detection rate then you may ask, well, are we detecting cancers that are not significant? You know, okay, you find more cancer, but does it need to be treated? And it appears that those cancers that are being found in this approach are, are significant cancers. And um, over half of them tend to be Gleason 7 or above, so intermediate or high-risk cancers. And if you flip the coin, you could say, well, that's, those are the patients in which you detect cancer by using this MRI technique.